So today, at the request of Mr. Hemminger and TV Pock, his two colleagues, uh, from about a week or so ago, he asked to uh, give a briefing to the Bay Area Caucus, of which I am co-chair of, uh, along with Assemblymember Gordon. Today was the first day we were able to accommodate that and still allow for them to report to the Bay Area Toll Authority, which they are scheduled to do in public session on Wednesday. Um, so that's the timing of this. I'm pleased that I was joined by uh, three of my colleagues. Senator Hill was in here, um, along with Senator Canella and uh, the much esteemed budget chair um, from San Francisco. Uh, so we basically heard a report today that um, their recommendation to BADA, which is now public, will be to um, have the opening sometime in December if all the fabrication work can get done. Uh, a lot of you reported that that was the one big concern, was if they couldn't get the retrofit of the retrofit done on time, that we couldn't open the bridge. So my understanding is both from a safety issue and just from a construction issue, they have to get that work done first before they can open the bridge. And that's the reason for the delay. Um, it creates some problems for them, as you will hear uh, on Wednesday, I assume, both in terms of weather, because obviously the weather is not as favorable in December as it would be on Labor Day weekend, and you don't get the three-day weekend. So, um, But I think this is a recognition that they're not able to open the bridge and open, be able to do it safely and still do the retrofit and get that done on time. Um, there's a lot in the report that we haven't been able to read, obviously, because we just got it. Uh, but I think it really breaks into two parts for me. How do we get the bridge open quickly and safely? Having been involved in this from the beginning, it's always been a race against time to get commuters off the existing uh, eastern span of the Bay Bridge. We've been told over and over again by experts that's, that's dangerous. If there's another Loma Prieta, there'll be failure along uh, throughout that bridge, putting people at risk, obviously. So we want to get the commuting public in the Bay Area off that bridge onto the new one. Um, but it's frustrating to say the least, and I've said this many times, 1998 I voted for this design when staff told us that it would cost $1.1 billion, that it would be done by 2003, that it would be seismically safe in a manner that no other bridge or structure would be in anywhere in the world, that it could withstand a 1,500-year seismic event. Uh, we're now at $6.3 billion, we're 10 years late, and now we're going to be later still, so we put the, the driving public at, at risk for longer than we, much longer than we wanted, obviously, but again, another delay. So there's really two parts. How do we get it open? How do we get it open quickly? And then the second part is looking back, and that's a lot of what this report we're told is about, who made what decisions when and why, and why are we in this situation? So that uh, requires a longer conversation. <laughs> What was your sense? What is your sense now after meeting with them for almost two hours? I, I, my sense is that they're being um, forthcoming. And I, again, I think what we've all said this, and uh, some of you have said this, we need to spend some time reading and analyzing the report they've given us. Uh, because heretofore, the information has been coming um, sort of in dribbles and drabs, knowing that there's been a lot of information for them to go and get. So I think what we're looking for now is... Uh, just the assurance and a very transparent, we have to be truthful with the public about what are legitimate concerns. In, in, in the big picture of this play, what does it, what does it really mean? Is it, is it maybe a little messier for, for commuters when they open it at a date that's not Labor Day, so may not have that longer weekend? Is this going to cost taxpayers more money? I mean, in the big picture, is it just a delay of a few months and the bridge opens as normal? Well, I think there are a lot of questions about who is responsible. Um, not having read all the contracts, there's issues about um, some of the pi private contractors and where the liability is financially, but that's based on the contract. So we had some discussion about that, but that's to be determined. I think the biggest concern for me is we're just leaving the public at risk. We've been doing this since 1989. And for me, the concern has always been I don't want to be responsible if that earthquake happens, we heard from um, one of the presenters today that there's a, that uh, the U.S. Geological Survey estimates this is 63 percent probability of a Loma Prieta-like earthquake in the Bay Area in the next 30 years. So it's really, it's, this is just a risk. It's a race, race against time. That's the consternation is the whole reason we built this new bridge was to make sure that we got people off the old bridge. We retrofitted everything else. But 
if with this delay, would it would, would the, the financial burden is this would this be on the contract or should it be on the tax? Uh, that's to be determined, and it's probably to be determined by attorneys. The, the commission's release says that there probably wouldn't be as much notice on, on when the bridge would close. They're talking about weather being a factor. Are you concerned? that this is going to create a, a much more of a hassle in traffic situation when they do close it down, if it can't be a, you know, early September, late August holiday weekend? I think the most important thing is safety. We have to get people off the existing bridge when the new bridge is safe. Every day that you delay, you put the, the commuting public at risk, many of whom are my constituents in the East Bay who commute to Senator Leno's district for work. So that's the thing that we should be focused on. Um, the difficulty in the commute on that particular weekend or those days are something that we're going to have to try to manage as best we can. Senator, you said that we don't yet know who's going to be liable for the additional cost, but did they make any indication in their briefing to you how much the additional cost will be of the delay? The number that I heard was about $15 million to get the saddle done, get it retrofitted and put in place, gentlemen. But, but there will be additional costs. Yes, that was a minimum number because, as, as Mr. Hemminger said, there's the issue of taking care of the bolts that failed with the saddle, and then there's the issue of uh, the oversight of the rest of the bolts and making sure that we know how safe they are and replacing them as needed once the bridge has been open. Senator, you said that one five, one five, fifteen. Senator, you said that you uh, are hoping that there will be more transparency. And the man in question bolted from the room, Caltrans Director Malcolm Doherty, said nothing. He basically said whatever Hemminger said, I said. So uh, he hasn't had the best uh, reputation lately. Uh, I mean, is that the kind of transparency are, that we're talking about when the head of the biggest transportation agency in California bolts out of the room and doesn't even answer a question? Uh, I'm focusing on the bolt part of your question. <laughs> I know. Um, all seriousness. I, I think we, I know, for, speaking for myself as chair of the committee, I've been frustrated by the lack of forthcoming um, information from the agency. I haven't made that, uh, I haven't held that to myself. We've had multiple hearings. Senator Canella has been part of that. Uh, our, my expectation all along is that they would be completely transparent. The, I, I'm of a belief that this is too big and too important a project that we should hedge our bets at all. We should just let the public know. Obviously, mistakes were made. I mean, for me, when you define it as a $1.1 billion project when we started and it's now a $6.3 billion project and it's 10 years late and they can't tell us if it's safe, much less how safe it is, that's a failure. So. All of those things we have to consider, but we can't lose focus of we've got to get people off the existing bridge onto the new bridge. Senator, to piggyback on his question, the meeting was not open to the public or to the press. And I know it, it wasn't to be a public <coughs> hearing, it was just a briefing for lawmakers, but I, how typical is that and why, why should it be that way when there is so much taxpayer dollar? Well, we're, we're, we made ourselves available immediately afterwards. I think this is... Um, Reflecting on this over the weekend, my preference would have been to have a hearing of the committee, but part of the problem with that is we have lots of members who, uh, including on the Assembly, who obviously aren't on the, com the Transportation Committee in the Senate, and then there are a lot of people like uh, Senator Leno, as chair of the Budget Committee, is not uh, always c capable of being in all these meetings. So we wanted to make sure the Bay Area delegation was informed. We also wanted to consider and be respectful for the Bay Area Toll Authority and the local folks who share responsibility on the bridge. Anybody else? Was anything said in the meeting that, you, that it's not supposed to be repeated to the public? Any agreements about not to? Uh... No, there was nothing. Everything that was in the meeting as far as in there was, there was no ask from any of the members of the TBPOC that we would withhold anything that I can remember. Um, everything that was presented to us um, in my mind's eye is available and obviously the PowerPoint is available and the reports available. So it's more of a logistics thing about how do we get this information given the time constraints and, and the ongoing sort of we're finding out more and more every day. Okay, anybody else? All right, thank you all. Thank you colleagues.